It is the raw dog himself, Brandon Royval, who's had uh, a couple days, I guess, to maybe come down a little bit from the high of that incredible win, man. So I guess just talk to me. I mean, a, a huge one for you in, in, in retrospect. How are you feeling about that win over Mateus Nicolau? It was it was really cool, man. It was. I feel like uh, yesterday I was at my my lady's house and uh, she was like, "Is this your handwriting?" And it was like a piece of paper, and uh, on the piece of paper it was just like stuff I needed to do to win this fight, but it was dated all the way back to um, December. And it was like, dang, I, I kind of like, I didn't know who I was going to fight next. I kind of already had a game plan against Kai Car France. So obviously, if I fought him, I would want to change things up for sure. But it was like with Nikolai, I, I came in there with like a set game plan stuff I was working on. And it was like when, before I fought him, I knew he was like probably one of the guys I was going to fight next. And it was like, uh, I had all, all the stuff worked out. So it was cool. It was cool to kind of see that and like see it like way dated back before I even me and him were even scheduled to fight. But I was already working on stuff that I'm like, okay, if I do this, if I fight him, I gotta do this, this and that. And then it was also cool to just see some of it uh come to fruition. And then it was just like even in my head today, today at practice, I was telling my friend, I was like uh one of my main training partners, I was like, dang, we had so many like things that we could have worked and drilled and all that stuff that the fight went so fast that we didn't get to do any of it really. Like there was only <laughs> There was only two things that I practiced that I, that I was like, okay, like it, it worked effectively. Besides like chasing him around and like, you know, pinning him down and kind of cornering him and feigning and like all that stuff. So, I, I mean, it, it was just one of those like, it worked out way better than expected. And uh, yeah, yeah, I'm, I'm really excited, man. Super excited to get that win and uh, make a statement and, you know, cement my place in the title picture. No question about it. I thought you were already there, but you definitely submitted it. So the things you worked, was that was that knee? Was that one of the things that you had in mind? Is like, this is going to be a weapon that'll work? Yeah, yeah. I noticed his tendency was to throw hook crosses and cross hooks. Those were like his big weapons, and he's going to try to lead me into it. So my tendency was like, um, off the feint, he goes downward. Like a, a lot of, or when he goes and attacks, a lot of times, there's a couple of people that I thought have done it. Kai Car France was one of the guys that anytime he throws, he sits down on his punch, which is like, you know, uh, uh, um, Kai's uh, or uh, not Kai, uh, Mateus's uh, Mateus's movement is, is so prevalent that it's like okay, you go side to side to side and then stops. So he has to sit down on his punches. So it was like that's the time to attack. That's the time to kind of meet him, or that's the time to feign him out. And uh, I know since he sits down, we are drilling knees over and over again. So it was just one of those like uh, I don't know. It, it, everything just came into place, and that knee that knee was part of the plan. And uh, there's a bunch of other stuff, but the knee was definitely part of the game plan. That's awesome, man. Excellent observation. So is that – like when you, when you watch fights, I mean, is are you breaking down guys every time you watch a fight? Like you're just seeing the tendencies right away, whether they're like your opponent or not? Yeah, yeah, and that's the move too, right? It's just like kind of like – just see tendencies and see, and see what like how I would fight them and all that stuff, especially guys in my weight class. It, it, sometimes I just enjoy a fight, but uh, – a lot of times during my weight class, I'm like, okay, how do I beat this guy? How do I go about fighting him? How do I do this? And uh, Mateus and Nikolai, in like my head, it was going to be a little bit of a puzzle. And it, I was going to have to figure out a lot of stuff on the go. And uh, it was interesting to kind of be in there with him and how quick his movement on the outside was. And and then also it was just like, it was also like exactly what we expected, which was really cool because it was like I, we game planned hard for him and it worked out perfectly. That's awesome, man. Well, you talked about cementing your place, you know, in the title picture. As I said, I thought you were already there, but – you know, it had been a year away, right? Because of different things that happened, you weren't able to compete. So I guess, I mean, how difficult was that stretch for you? Because, man, you had all this momentum, and then it did feel like maybe some of that momentum got just kind of taken away from you. Yeah, yeah, and uh, I feel like I've done a good job, too, of just keeping my placement in that momentum. And it was like, uh, I was going to fight Askarov. I already fought Kai Car France, Pantoja, and Moreno. So it was like, I, I was going to fight Askarov. He he drops out of the fight and then quits the UFC and goes somewhere else. And then it's like, okay, well, I take his place. So uh, I don't necessarily get to fight him. But then it's like I fight everyone behind him. You know, they offered me a, um, they offered me Amir Al Bazi, and that was like the next like step behind. Where it's like um, Amir Al Bazi was hurt at the time, couldn't take the fight. So it's just like one of those situations where it was like I cleared out people behind me, and then I I fought everyone in front of me, and I cleared out a few of those guys too. You know what I'm saying? So it was like. I, I don't know how close I am, but uh, I know I was close. And uh, that was one of the cool things, too. It's like I, I was going into the fight, and I'm like, I'm going to win a, a, a title opportunity today. And, like, that that was what was on the line in my head. And uh, I don't know. It, it, it's a lot to take into a fight, too, but it's, like, the third time I've done it. So um, I'm not I'm not a stranger. Half my fights in the UFC has been uh, title eliminator fights. So uh, I'm, getting, I'm getting to the point where it's second nature, and all these fights are big deals, and all these fights are – important to shape the division and uh and i'm glad that 
I passed this one. Yeah. The other thing that I love is, is you, you know, your, your confidence now and you're stating what you deserve, right? Like, I feel like this fight more than ever, you know, you've always kind of, Hey man, I think I'm there. Like, you know, I think I'm as good as anybody. This time it was like, no, I demand it. This is my yeah. spot. I've earned it. Where did that come from, man? Did something switch in you that you're like, I'm, I'm just calling my shots from now on? Well, yeah, yeah. And then it's just, it's, I want, I believe it. I believe I'm the most dangerous dude in this division. It's like, and I feel like I've proven it too. It's like, you can watch Moreno, you can watch uh, uh, Pantoja and all them. It's like, if you watch them, they're, they're not as like, like I use all my weapons. I'm throwing knees, I'm throwing back elbows, I'm throwing elbows in fights. I'm doing, I'm doing a lot, you know? And uh, I just feel like when, when it comes down to like, who's dangerous is I'm the most dangerous in this division right now. And uh, I'm the biggest threat to anybody. It's like, okay, you, you might be able to strategically beat me maybe. But that being said is like, if not, you're in for a fuck of a night. You know what I'm saying? It's a, it's going to be a bad night. And it's like, I have a lot of ways to end your night. You know what I'm saying? And uh, I knew that in my head, but it was like, I go against Mateus Nikolai and he was doing some of the stuff that I already predicted he was going to do and all that stuff. And I'm like, dang, I, I already kind of just like thought throughout that. It's like, as soon as I land the knee and you look at the videos and all that stuff, I'm just like, God, I'm so much more dangerous than these guys. And uh, I, I, I truly believe that. It's like, I'm more dangerous. And it's like, I, I am an exciting fighter, but I'm only an exciting fighter because how dangerous of a fighter I am is, is when it hits the ground, I'm deadly. I can submit any of these guys. When we're on the feet, is I have the most diverse attacks in the whole entire UFC flyweight division. And probably on the roster, man, if we're being really honest, is uh, I'm throwing elbows, I'm throwing knees, I'm doing the kicks, punches. It's like, I really do feel like if it's a taekwondo match, a boxing match, a kickboxing match, I can be any of these guys. So uh, I just feel like I'm just the most dangerous dude on the roster. I love it, man. I won't argue with that. Now, uh, the the uh, backup role at USC 290, is that official or I mean? Yeah, yeah. Was... That was like one of those things is like, I knew it was official because uh, uh, for a long time, like uh, when, when I, me and Mateus Nikolai fought. He wanted to uh, um, the contract to be – because I called him out. I called him and Kai Carfrance at the same time because I didn't want to get skipped. You know, I don't want them to fight each other or something to happen where I'm like, dang, I missed out on the top five fighter, you know. I didn't want that to happen, so I called them both out at the same time and just hoped it would work out. They gave me Mateus Nikolai, but Mateus Nikolai didn't want to fight me because his girlfriend fought the week before. And uh, and in my head, I, I told my manager, the cool, we'll fight a month later. Uh, my, fo uh, my foot was broken. And when I did the call, I wasn't thinking of the timeline. I was just like, I want to fight. I want to fight before my year's up or before, like, I got, uh, exactly a year of when I fought. I wanted to fight before that. And uh, and um, he, he said, can I get it a month back? And I was like, perfect. My foot's broken. That was a dumb call. I can't believe I called out for <laughs> April. I didn't realize I'd only give myself, like, four weeks, five weeks to train for this specifically, you know? And uh, it was in my head, it was dumb. And then my manager calls me back and he goes, no, we're taking it in April because they want you to be ready for a uh, – for a backup position in the title eliminator. And I was like, perfect. And I was like, okay, we'll take it in April. Then like, I can't argue with that. And then, uh, so I already knew that going in, but you don't believe shit. You know, I, I still don't believe shit until, uh, until the last, like the, a couple of days after my fight, they sent me the flight information to when to go down to the, the fights and all that. And I'm like, damn, is this real? Like, this is actually happening. And, uh, I, I don't know. It was really cool. So yeah, I didn't believe anything until, uh, until I got the flight information sent to me, and I'm like, oh, tight. This is actually going down. Like, how crazy. All right, so, Brandon, what, what I want to know about this situation, because this backup situation is interesting, right? Like, I completely understand from any fighter's perspective, if you're even disgusted in a title shot, you got to get your name in there, right? But this is what I always worry about with guys that accept this role is you've got to prepare for both the reigning champion – and the number one contender at the same time, right? So, what in your mind? How do you prepare for this? Are you are you creating two different game plans and, and getting two different camps together at the same time? Like, how do you do this? Yeah, yeah. So uh, it was interesting because uh, today I practiced and yesterday I practiced. I was kind of game plan on how I'm going to go about this because this is an interesting position, you know. And uh, I think the, what I really want to do is just improve on everything I'm doing, anyways. And just mainly, this is a day. This is the time to focus on me and hit all these growth. So it's like, when I do, when I do fight any of these guys, it's like, I'm a whole different fighter than what they have to, than what they've seen last to me. And uh, yeah, so that, that's kind of how I want to prepare for it is I, I want to add more tools in my utensil. And I still want this to be like a full on growth moment of like, okay, even if nothing happens for this title fight. And then when I go fight for the title next, it's like, they're fighting a whole different fighter. And I, I picked up all these little tools and all these little things that uh, I could add to my camp. So it was actually one of those positions that's like, since I did know about that role, I prepared for it that like before the camp, it's like, okay, if I fight these two, 
how would I go about it? And it's like, I'm just going to work on these little tools, utensils and stuff and just grow as a fighter and uh, make them worry about me. Cause it's like, my cardio is going to hold up no matter what. If I can change who I was compared to the last time they see me, which I have a hundred percent, but compared to the last time they even see me in the octagon, then I'm going to go murder these dudes. I'm going to go make statements on them. And uh, I feel like I've evolved way more than these two and they've been in the ufc for a lot longer than me you know they've had this as their full-time job they've had full-time funding for this it's like i was doing this without fucking having any support anything you know and it was like no recovery none of that stuff so it's not i'm living as a ufc fighter i feel like i've made a lot of changes to my games a lot of uh, evolutions and uh i look a lot different and i feel like they, these two dudes who i have a lot of respect for but they're still throwing the same sloppy shit as they were right when they entered the ufc Man, I, I love it, dude. I mean, the way you perform is incredible. Your mindset right now sounds phenomenal as well. Uh, I, I hope you get that title fight. I guess if it, if it doesn't happen, I mean, if nothing else, you've got another training camp. You get to be around fight week. Uh, I guess if that fight does play out, do you have a lean one way or the other? I mean, they have history together, of course, but Brandon Moreno's kind of evolved a little bit at least since then. Or yeah, seems yeah, to be yeah. a different place. So, so which, I mean, do you have a lean on that fight? How you think it plays out if it I does happen? I feel like I want Pantoja to win more, but uh, that being said, is I, you're right. I feel like Brandon Moreno is the more evolved fighter, and I feel like he's adding up more tools to his utensil and all that stuff. So I would probably lean Brandon Moreno, but I've changed my answer like four times so far. So we'll see. <laughs> we'll see what happens fight night. <laughs> Hey, but that's what makes for a great fight, right? When you're like 50-50, like, oh, it could go this way, it could go this way. That's what makes it fun, right? Yeah, yeah, exactly. And that's how I feel about it, too, is just like, yeah, I really don't know what's going to happen, and that's the really cool part about that fight. I guess what really matters most is that you got next, right? When yeah, I mean, yeah. if, if you don't get that fight, you got the winner. Yep, yep, exactly. And uh, I'm so stoked about it. It's still like uh, hasn't really registered sometimes. Sometimes I'm just like walking. I'm like, damn, I'm exactly where I wanted to be my whole entire life. And it's like, that's a, that's a wild feeling, you know? What a cool thing to say. I'm exactly where I wanted to be my whole life, man. That's phenomenal. All right, so listen, uh, what's what's the plan right now? I mean, it sounds like you're already back in the gym. You're already game plan. I mean, do you take any time away at all? Or are you already in like a championship camp right now? Or is it just kind of light? What's the plan? Uh, I, took a, I took a week off uh, for the most part. I, I was still running and doing like light workouts and stuff. But I took a week off, made sure my body's good. Um, for me, I, uh, the Rotalo brothers are in town in uh, Colorado, and uh, the one FC is in Colorado right now. So it's like, I'm gonna try to go. Uh, I'm trying to go to like, my like jujitsu gym that I train at. It's called Logos, and uh, and go train with the Rotalo brothers, man. So I think that's how I want to finish up this rest of this like next two weeks is just trying to get as much training in jujitsu with them as possible, brush up on that, and then uh, get back to just the whole MMA aspect of it. I feel like these last like this whole last camp, all I wanted to do was just box and do jujitsu and it's like i i can do that for the next month or so before training camp gets serious and then i can work on my mma game and stuff so uh for me it's like uh I, i'm gonna do the factory x classes train at the gym and all that but it's like i want to focus and put emphasis on my boxing and jujitsu for this next uh, couple weeks i love it man that's that's smart man if you got world-class training partners like that that you could go with why not take advantage of it? i mean that's that's two of the best in the world yeah yeah for sure man and uh i was super excited when i saw that they uh that, you know, I was super excited when 1FC said they were going to come to Colorado because it was like, I, I slid in Demetrius Johnson's DMs. I'm like, yo, if you need a place to trade, you know, I'll hold mitts for you. If you need to, you know, if you need someone to drive you around, I got you, my bro. <laughs> like, like, but, uh, <laughs> which is crazy that I'm about to fight for a flyweight belt. And I was just really thinking like that. But uh, yeah, um, w when, when people come to Colorado, they come out early because the elevation sucks ass. So uh, we got a bunch of 1FC fighters, uh, a bunch of uh, like jujitsu guys like that. So. I'm just going to try to get in as much work with some of those guys as I can because uh, it's one of my favorite promotions for sure. I love it, man. Well, here you are performing at a world-class level, but you can still be a fanboy at heart, right? I mean, yeah, that, that's a good part of it. <laughs> I'm a fan first no matter what. Uh, when I saw Max Holloway, I was like, bro, like, can you sign this? <laughs> I get a picture. And I, I love honestly, it. I froze up. I froze up, which is even worse. I was like, oh. <laughs> <laughs> I love that, man. That's phenomenal. No, nah, that's great, man. I love it, man. If you can keep that that energy, that's what it's all about, man. I'll actually be out in Denver next week for one championship, so maybe we'll cross paths out there. Oh, but uh, one way or another, man, we'll we'll see you here in Las Vegas. Best of luck. Congratulations on another phenomenal victory. I mean, you're 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 taking everything that you're earning, man. You're getting it, and uh, we'll see how things play out for you this summer. All right, cool. Thank you very much. Thanks for your time, brother. I'll wrap you later. Appreciate it. Oh, thank awesome. you, Ebi Glass. <laughs> Perfect. <Appreciate that. laughs>